2005, the Humanity Archival Storage Project was commenced by leading government officials, scientists, and academic alumni across the world due to the fear that humanity's treasures were increasingly threatened by war and natural disasters. The project was one of the most complex undertakings in our species' history. The creation of the Archival of Humanity's Knowledge and Culture, the Archival Simplistical Computer, was designed for the early days of the project. The device was composed of iron, the most stable element, and built to stand on the statement to our species for millennia. After the construction of the ASC, I was assigned to the HASPA team. We were the device bunch, consistently a representative of the field of science, history, the arts, and every other possible area of human study. Our task was to program the device with the information and artifacts worth reserving. Our group started off cordial enough, but we quickly broke down into sections and factions as we started fighting viciously over what would be saved. The artists wanted musical samples and paintings saved. The historians want their national prize documents including, and the scientists wanted their formulas and theories preserved. Eventually, though, the series of backroom deals and shifting alliances between desperate groups are compromised of sorts of reached out into other devices with the formula of Newton and Einstein. The plays of Shakespeare, the music of Mozart, the painting of the Pascal, and many other great discoveries and creations of humanity. In 2012, it was finally time to store the device. Locations around the world were scouted out ranging from the Himalayas to the bottom of the Atlantic. Eventually, a decision was made to place the ASC beneath the Sweeney Mountains of Antarctica. The location was free from war and fault lines. The frigid cold would even slow down the wear and tears of the machine, extending its lifespan for another millennia or so. It was a perfect place to station the device. Construction of the ASC vault started in 2013. The process did take another year, but eventually the construction team reached suitable depths. I was there for the opening ceremony as the drill team dug through the least 20 or so feet to reach the appropriate levels of the ASC vault. At around noon, I heard the drilling stop. I thought they had finally reached acceptable levels, but the loud screams that quickly filled the air freed me from that thought. A rescue team was sent in, but they reported that the drill had hit a cavern hundreds of feet deep. A rescue operation was quickly launched, but all that was left of the team were corpses and smashed machinery. They had simply fallen from too great a height for their own to be any survivors. During the cleanup, the body recovering team discovered something rather unusual. An ASC-like device wedged into the corner of the cavern. This device was nearly 5,000 years old. In 1984, there lived an old widow lady by herself in the two-story house where she was completely immobile and bound to her wheelchair. Ever since the mysterious death of her husband, she required the aid of a carer who would visit her daily to help her with her everyday task. What made it even more difficult was the fact that the two floors of the house were only connected by an old staircase inside. When the old lady needed to move between the two, the carol would have to carry her frail body like an infant up and down the stairs. One day the police received a call from the widow. There had been a murder. Since police units were scarce at the time and the murderer had already fled the scene, only one detective was sent out to conduct the initial crime. Since police units were scarce at the time and the murderer had already fled the scene, only one detective was sent out to conduct the initial crime scene report. He arrived to see the carer's body spread out of the floor with her vocal cords ripped out in a pool of blood on the first level of the house. With the old lady stood atop of the staircase in her wheelchair watching him, still and silently, seemingly in shock. He could immediately rule her out as a suspect due to her inability to move up and down the stairs and because she was strapped up there, the time of the murder took place. It was similar to the death of her husband many years ago, who had suffocated in his sleep on the couch downstairs. The detective put on the gloves, took photos, swapped for evidence, and covered the body until the coroner arrived later. All routine business. He scoped the house downstairs for any clues, then asked the old lady if he could look upstairs. 
She insisted that she was upstairs the whole time and no one apart from her had been up there that day. But regardless of this, the detective ascended the staircase in which she hesitantly moved aside. Beyond the staircase was a narrow corridor that had three closed doors along it. He checked behind each of the doors, the empty bedroom, nothing, the bathroom, nothing. He became anxious as he slowly made his way to the final bedroom where the old lady had slept. He opened it and everything looked normal. A bed, a wardrobe, and the bedside table with the lamp. He checked every wall of the room in horror as it was not what he discovered, but it was what he didn't discover that made him stop dead in his tracks and slowly reach for his gun in the holster. It was a detail so minor that he had completely overlooked it at the last investigation of the husband's death. There was no phone upstairs. He suddenly heard a noise that he ripped through his gun and rushed out of the room, only to find the empty wheelchair on top of the stairs.